So we're back to where I almost died. Um, super excited. This week, um, I got to sit down virtually with Matt Frazier. Um, you know, him and I, we've known each other for about a year and a half, but funny enough, I've known his fiance slash wife. I don't know what she is technically yet. He calls her a wife, but I don't think I'm married. Um, so I've known her since college. So we, we go way back. So it was a lot of fun to chat with Matt. Um, He's gonna be helping me out on my conditioning leading up for the 2021 season, so really, really excited. So listen in, get his mind mentality, where he's come through CrossFit and what he's doing with the rest of his career. Wake up and like feel like you're dying every day for work. I mean, it's, it's really nice. Um, I, I thought in retirement, I would have more free time. <laughs> I, am, I am busier than I've ever been um life isn't as simple anymore like before it was hard but it was simple like yeah totally I knew what i had to do you get up you check the boxes you come home eat pass out do it all again so now it, it's just the whole a whole new aspect to it of you know like just phone calls emails you know trying to i don't know like work a regular job-ish type thing i guess <laughs> but no it's a lot of fun I mean, I, I'm I'm really jealous that you don't feel like death every single day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I Dude, mean, it, I'm the it, exact opposite right now, right? Like, I'm I'm just pretty much gearing up back into training after my injury. I mean, I'm competing next weekend already. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So, like, I mean, I just I feel like dog every single day. Yeah, dude. the 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 best way I can phrase it is like. I remember after graduating high school and then when I graduated college and like you wake up, like you have a nightmare that like you finished or like that you, you got your final exam list of like what time and where all your exams are. And then there's a class that like, you're like, wait, I was signed up for another class and your guidance counselor, or whoever's like, you never showed up. And it's like, no, like I thought someone would tell me. And just that like anxiety of like, there's more work to be more, 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 more. And now like I'll wake up and like the first instinct is like, oh my God, I have to like do rowing intervals, squats, like all these different things. And then it's like, oh no, I don't have to, I don't have to do any of that. That's awesome. That's great, man. So yeah, I mean, I was going to say like, obviously keeping up with you and Sammy and everything, you know, we know, you know, training and everything was your life and competing. So what i mean guess like yeah what's i it does seem like you guys are busier than ever between traveling building the house and you know everything else that you guys got going on yeah you know it's basically everything that for the last five to six years that we have put on the back burner um and said no to is we're we're like kids in a candy shop right now of just this is the first time in a very long time that we've been able to say yes to a lot of these opportunities and um, you know so it's just trying to keep it under control so you know I remember it was probably a month after after the games and like I knew I, I've known for a long time that I was retiring um, but having a list of like five or six different ventures that I wanted to kind of execute on and then when it came to time to putting pen to paper um and be like okay i can realistically take on two of these things and then saying no or pushing pause on the rest executing on those two things i'm in the final stages of those um and so now starting to entertain the idea of bringing in a third and a fourth you know once the other projects kind of get the ball rolling work out all the kinks um but yeah then on top of it all you know, trying to do all these things. And then it's like, all right, we're selling our house here. We're moving, we're like, we're going up to Vermont for the summer and trying to figure out where we're going to live for the next few years. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just different. And, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to work through it, but we're having a blast doing it. That's awesome, man. So, so speaking of all the projects, you know, obviously one of the reasons and the, the biggest reason we're on this call is because of the program you're coming out through hybrid yeah um you know me and you had messaged a little bit back and forth about it and you know so i've been in this weird thing in my career where i feel like i have all most of the boxes checked off um mm -hmm. 
but you know conditioning's always been that one thing that especially as a strong man it's the last thing i want to do um and i'm not going to do it unless somebody tells me to so, so yeah. seeing you come out with the you know the hwpo program with hybrid <clears throat> let's talk about that a little bit yeah i mean I mean, firstly, I think it's it's going to be super exciting because I think I'm sure your definition and my definition of conditioning are just so, <laughs> so far apart. Um, you know, like, like we had talked about, um, like, I want to get you up to Vermont and I want to see what your training is. That That's another thing that, you know, there's been so many people over the years that I've gotten to meet through CrossFit and, you know, I want to train with them. I want to see what they do. You know, people that are, you know, athletes in other sports, actors that they don't care what they, what their score is. They care how they look or, you know, you know, even uh, my, my tattoo artist, he works out so that he can sit for longer sessions. Wow. Uh, so working out, I, I want to start working out with all these different people to kind of learn all right, what's valuable to this craft and that craft. Um, and I mean, for you, I am so intrigued by this because I remember hearing stories of some of the other strong men doing their, their their conditioning for the day, and it was like a ten minute walk. <laughs> and I was like, "Get out of here! That's that's it." Like, whereas like my definition of conditioning, you know, we're going on like a two hour run, we're doing an hour and a half of bike intervals, we like we're doing hill sprints until like we heat stroke out, you know? Uh, so, you know, I, I'll i be excited to, for when you get the programming and I'm sure there's gonna be some modifying because you, you're you like the outlier that's so far out here. Um, but then getting you up to Vermont in, in the gym and, you know, I'm decking out like fully equipped and anything yeah. under the sun is gonna be in that gym. But I wanna see your day of training, you know? I remember, when I was doing Olympic weightlifting and taking, you know, two, three minutes in between lifts and then jumping into CrossFit. And, <laughs> and then it's like, yo, you're lifting on the minute. You're doing two reps every minute on the minute. Like what in the world is going on here? And then being down at a hybrid and watching the power lifters train and like kind of looking at these guys doing squats. I'm like, yo, did you forget that you were working out right now? <laughs> and like, 15 minutes what are you doing <laughs> you know it's it's really funny you know because i think like strongman i think is obviously in between between the powerlifting and the intensity of crossfit but it's funny you know you went from weightlifting into crossfit i did the opposite so i actually found strongman through crossfit back oh in no kidding so back oh, in I didn't 2009 realize yeah I, I i went to my first my first box back in 2009 when i was in high school and um you start you started crossfit before i did yeah, and obviously you're way better at it. So <laughs> I was horrible. Um, I was, you know, I was not great. I think the first time I ever went through Fran, I think uh, I, I was like a nine thirty six. Woof. Yeah, yeah, man. It was, it was a, it was a. It was I mean, you're, you're a big boy to be getting up up to that pull up bar. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. the fact that you completed it. I was is, only is about. Impressive. I think I was about two hundred and ten pounds back then. You know, as a high school senior. So I was a lot wow. smaller, um, you know, and I, I was looking back in my training log and it was, uh, I think it was 2014 was the last time I did Murph. Okay. Yeah. So I made it through Murph. Uh, you know, obviously give me, give me Grace or Isabel any day of the week and I'll rock it yeah. out and I'll be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but Man, yeah, that, you that's know, wild. Conditioning for me is, um, it's more sports specific, right? So it's more of Absolutely, the, yeah. Um, medleys that we do in strongman, but typically, I mean, I'm not going to work for more than about 90 seconds before I take yeah. a break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the, the training I've done, you know, as, and coming from weightlifting, it's like, you know, the conditioning was like a kick in the teeth for me to the point now where I would say of the top ranked, you know, I'm one of the, one of the better engines in the sport. Um, you know, when it comes down to like the hour long workouts, I'm usually, usually able to grab a win or like be in that top three. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's taken a lot of learning mistakes, talking to other people, figuring it out. But, um, 
yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot along the way and it, it'll be super exciting to see and try to tailor some of my stuff to you for being sport specific. Cause you know, a lot of the conditioning I'll do, like I'll do twice a week, you know, 60 to 90 minutes on, on a bike, just a stationary bike, like heart rate monitor on going. Oh, for um, me. And that's like the easy conditioning. And then <laughs> it's sitting up. on the rower. <laughs> you know, usually I can knock out like my, a full rowing session in like 20 minutes. Uh, but it's like a minute. My favorite workout is a minute 40 on 20 seconds off. And like, you're just yank, like as close to max effort as you can, but it's like that 20 second rest and it's nine rounds. And after five rounds, you get a two minute rest and that two minutes goes by Dude, so quickly. I do like Tabata rowing and I'm dying and that's four minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I, I would, you know, for my own personal interest, like I would love to see you pull like a 500 meter row. You know, if you have like, even like, you could probably do it in like close to a minute 20. I'll do it tomorrow for just, you. That's just something you're willing to just hop on and do. Yeah, Dude, why not? I haven't done a 500. I did a 500 meter row like a couple weeks into my CrossFit career. Like I am still like, I have no idea what I'm doing in the gym. <laughs> I'm showing up sporadically. <laughs> and, uh, and the owner of the gym talked about how they did a 500 meter row earlier that day. And I was like, oh, I'll go test this. I went in the back. I, I think I pulled like a one, like 34 or something like that. No technique. I didn't know where to put the damper. Nothing. <laughs> Just have it up and, on. Uh, and I, I walked back out into the main part of the gym. And I was like, hey, what was your time on that row? And he's like, oh, I got 127. And I was like, damn it. I went, <laughs> I walked right back in, in into the into the rowing room, put it on. And I pulled like a 126 and then have never touched it since. Oh, like, <laughs> I was like, there's no, I never want to put myself through that again. You know, like I'm fighting the uphill battle, uh, like oh, five yeah. foot six. Um, but yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll test that when, when someone tells me I have to. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a big squat and deadlift workout tomorrow night, so I'll do that as a little warm up before I get going. Dude, not many people can do just a, a 500 meter, just hold your breath and go as a warm up. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't totally crap me out before, you know, I have to, I have to work up to, I think I'm pulling 900 for a triple tomorrow night. Jesus. So, yeah. 900 for a triple. Like that's unfathomable to me. Like when we were at the, uh, the last Arnold, when like there were no spectators, I was on the commentary. And so I was able to like sit back there and watch a couple things like on TV, it doesn't do justice to know how big you guys are and i'm like, small yeah like you next to everyone else you're just dwarfed by everyone <laughs> and so it's like it's just like watching an nfl game you're like oh all right the linemen are a bit bigger type thing you know you see thor or brian shaw you're like okay they're a little bit bigger than everyone else but then like i meet you and i'm like oh my god you're the little guy out here and you're like still taller than me enormous <laughs> and yeah so i mean that was super eye-opening but then like watching you guys warm up in the back was just like unfathomable you know like i my deadlift pr is like 535 and i'm like wow you guys are pulling like double <laughs> like not percentages like you know other crossfit games competitors like all right you know they deadlift 30 40 you know getting up like 75 pounds more than me i'm like you guys are just double that's bananas <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you see that as unfathomable meanwhile i look at wads that you guys do like you know the final wad of the games this past year and i'm like i would oh just, my god don't get me started <laughs> i would just wave my hand say thank you dave i'm good uh and, yeah you know, turn around and walk away so <laughs> now when, when you're doing, what, what did you deadlift? Do you, do you recall what you went, went up to, um, at the Arnold that year? So I opened on the at, elephant bar. I opened at nine twenty one. Um, my goal was to pull a thousand and I totally, totally underestimated how beat up I was going to be from day one. 
Um, so oh, okay. I opened yep. at 921. Then I went to 961 and I actually missed that because uh, some, my peck cramped up like halfway through the pull when I got right to my yep. knees. So I just kind of let it go. I mean, you know, like pulling a max deadlift, you have oh, one yeah. good shot. Yeah. You know, if it doesn't happen that first time, it's just, it's good after that. So, yeah. you know, it was definitely, I, I think I underperformed. I mean, you know, before my best pull before the Arnold was 970 in training. Um, yep. So I was pretty confident. But I mean, you know, competition has its effect on you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I, I know for myself, every rookie at the games, they, they it's like you can prepare as much physically as you want, but then just the mental beat down and then and then like almost a mental insecurity of like yeah my legs have never felt like this before because you've never been in that arena and been around that competition that's going to push you to that new level of intensity and yeah you i i remember like what was it one year it was like the final workout i i think i won the workout or i came second i won my heat and uh and they they said they're like dude like everyone on the demo team beat you or like when we tested this workout like multiple people beat you or like whatever it was and it was like they beat us by like a minute on like a six minute workout which yeah, is pretty big but crazy and i was like well when did you test this one it was like oh we tested this one early and i was like ah yes that's yes, why there you go <laughs> yeah and th there's been a few workouts that i've been curious and i've done them in training and it's you can shave off so much time when you're fresh um you know and that's the big reason why like so much of our training we intentionally beat ourselves down we never test our like one rep lifts when we're fresh because for me it's useless like that's yeah. useless information to go into a competition of oh i know i can clean 385 it's like well, who cares what can you do after three days of competition that's yeah. what matters and I think a lot of athletes, especially in CrossFit, fall into that trap because they're going in working off their most ideal situation and thinking it's going to apply to day three of a competition. It's like, nah, yeah, nah, nah. no, no, no. So, so speaking of the games and everything, and then obviously with the program that you're coming out with, let give give us a snapshot of what like a daily training would look like for you in games prep. Um, and then let's just kind of, you know, let, without giving out too much information about the program, yeah, yeah. have a little overview of everything. Yeah. So, so I did one, uh, zoom call, you know, we sent out a zoom invite to a thousand of the people that signed up for the presale and kind of ran them through of like what to expect. Um, and you know, because a big thing too, is I want to make sure people know what they're signing up for. You know, if they think that they're getting my competition week before the games training i i don't want them to be disappointed um yeah. so i'm making myself very clear uh and one guy asked you know is this like your your games training and i was like no absolutely <laughs> not i was like when when i did my pre-game training there's one other person in the world that should have been doing it and that was tia like it was Tia. Yeah. And I was like, even myself, like that volume and intensity, I was barely hanging on. Like I had some training days where it got rough. Um, and that's all you were doing. You know, like you're not the, you're not like the rest of us that, you know, have a job and then are going to do exactly. this as just and, a workout. And that was one thing. Like I was like, it is a full time job. I'm training from like, I am up at eight. I'm at the gym at nine. And even prior to 9 a.m i'm here warming up activating muscles sammy's doing body work on me you know it's food it is from sun up to sundown eyes open eyes closed and then even even my sleep like i'm my room is set up like an incubator for yeah. just the best recovery i'm sleeping 10 hours a night minimum when i'm training and so i'm i'm not expecting i'm trying to be conscious of people having jobs and like so it's i think i have four people testing the programming right now um one is a good crossfit athlete like regional level athlete one is a father of four that's fit one is a master's competitor and then another is a master's that just working out to be fit for life cool um 
and all of them i'm getting the feedback they almost every workout full training session including bonus work accessory warm-up everything uh is two hours um so like for for yourself i'm assuming there's going to be stuff in there that you're like nope not doing that like <laughs> like you have no use for it. you're training for your sport and trying to use this as accessory to complement that um so i mean like going back to my training before the games it was usually three sessions um you know one is in the gym of all the typical crossfit stuff of like the couplets triplets metcons all that stuff um usually a couple hours like 9 a.m say until noonish come home eat lay on the couch for an hour and then it was either back to the gym or i'm just training at my house here and it's all the single modality stuff you know the squats rowing assault bike um usually not a metcon it's usually just pure pure strength training or pure conditioning and then we'd usually do like a pool session or a run um go up go up to the lake you know we had we had a friend that lives on the lake that helped out all the competitors in the area he would let us swim off his dock and he would set up buoys and oh wow but i mean and then you know scarfing down as much food as i can in between each session um you know i i was you i couldn't handle the amount of food i had to eat so i was taking in two to three thousand calories a day just in liquid oh wow um yeah it was and you know like i'm not big you know i'm five <laughs> six i usually float like high 190s during during training and so it's just like you're packing in as much stuff into fluids like to the point that it can't dissolve in the fluid anymore so you're yeah. just taking down chunky stuff love that i mean the amount of snickers bars that i ate <laughs> like i'll never i'll never eat another snickers again i hate them i lived <laughs> off them for the last two three years um but then even like when i'm done training it's getting back here i'm doing the body work on myself that i can do we had a massage table set up in the living room so sammy would do the body work on my back and glutes um you know sauna ice bath i have them both in the backyard yeah and then it's try to grab an hour of just like turn off the brain watch relax TV, yeah mindless relax and then in bed i like i have a bedtime i had to put a sign next to my tv that said like it says tv off at 10 make yourself proud because i, I am the just like next episode one more one more i can fall into that i can stay up until 6 a.m watching tv without batting an eye well, i and, think that uh, you guys talked about that when you were talking with uh steffi and hayden right like how sammy like ever since you've pulled the plug on competing like you'll just be chilling on the couch watching tv till like 2 or 3 a.m and she's like yeah. all right peace out i'm going to bed oh yeah sammy <laughs> sammy's like if if she's able to she'll she'll get in bed at 7 30 and just like <laughs> she's the type of person that like like when we go to bed together i loathe it of just like she'll just be like all right good night head touches the pillow and boom out. she's out and i'm like what are you doing <laughs> how did you do that like as soon as i close my eyes that's when my brain's like cool we're gonna figure out all of your life problems right now and then it's just you know it's just the head running so uh yeah like i putting my putting myself to bed is like a full routine just to like yeah. get my mind to shut off because i'm thinking about the next day of training too of like 100%. All right, i need to do this you know i'm stressing out about all right what's this what's coming up in this competition the last couple of years in our sport it's been so much uncertainty of like what if this what if that you know what if we have to compete here we can't compete there then what and you just you get lost in the what if game uh so i mean it's really it's a good mental challenge of trying to figure out, okay, what do I have control over and how can I, you know, attack it? So, so what, it's just a in day in, day out of just trying to figure that out. What was like the weekly split for you? Was it like five days of training, two days off, like recovery days? What were you looking at? Yeah. Um, so I always took uh, Mondays off. Um, it originally started because um, the gym was empty on Sundays, and so I love training on Sundays. Yep. And then same here. And then the gun range was empty on Mondays. 
And so like, <laughs> it was great, you know, early on in my career is like that. That's what I did on my off day. I just went plink steel. Um, and so that's why it started. But then I kind of realized like, why would I not train on Sundays? Because every time I go into a competition, most competitions are Saturday, Sunday or Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I was always having to change my training schedule the week prior, two weeks prior for the competition. I was like, why don't I just train on the schedule that I use to compete? Makes sense. Um, yeah, so I always took Mondays off and then, you know, regular training days. And then I would uh, zero impact days on Thursdays. So okay. for me, it was, um, you know, usually uh, swim day. And our, our swim workouts got gnarly. You know, we were there for a while. Um, so, you know, you're still like, it's the full body workout. Like my muscles are screaming, my lungs Long are summer, screaming, yeah. everything. Um, but it was just that day to just kind of deload the joints, you know, let, let that spine actually, you know, come <laughs> apart for once. Um, so yeah, it was usually a swim and then, uh, or a, like spin bike. Oh, nice. And so my spin bike workout is usually between hour and hour 15. So I think what, what I was going off of for my programming is I think they usually come out around 40 to 45 minutes for the, okay. for the bike workouts on Thursdays, because like when I was doing the hour, hour 15, it's like it a literal puddle underneath the bike of sweat. Jesus. I'm questioning my life of like, Oh yeah. Like if I'm going into a 20 minute interval by minute four, I'm questioning, like, I don't think I can hold this pace for 10 Ooh. minutes, let alone 20, 20. Yeah. And then it's just like, you just don't give yourself an option of like, okay, if I fail, I fail, but like, it's not going to be because I was willing to fail. hundred um, percent. And that's, that's something that I talk about too, right? Like for me with my program, every time I step into the gym, whatever's in the program is an expectation that I do it. Mm hmm you know, and that's just kind of in my mindset. And that's like, like people are always like, you know, how did I get to this level being this small? And it's just been that mindset for the past 12 years of training and strong. Men. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I teeter back and forth, you know, it's kind of, I, my outlook kind of contradicts itself, but in terms of worst case scenario in training is that you fail and you don't hit your goal. And so I'm willing to go in and try anything you know i'll hit a workout with just recklessness and just to see all right where is my limit where do i where does my body shut down um because i've had those of like you know you're you're doing your intervals and it's like your quad cramps or just like i've had workouts where i just it was like a just a red light going off i finished and then i fell asleep like i think it was just my body was just like mayday mayday it's time like yo it's we're time. shutting it down boom um but yeah like a failure is only a failure if you don't learn from it so it's For taking sure. those experiences and be like okay well what went wrong how can i get better at it you know taking something away from it um but then on the other hand a lot of days i look at it like th this is my livelihood this is how i make my living and you know if I'm not giving my full effort, I'm only robbing myself, yeah, you definitely. know, because this is the only thing I have going on. The only task on my list when I wake up in the morning is to give everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, I, I go on like failure is not an option. And then it's like, go ahead, fail, <laughs> like, whatever. And it's you know, cool. so it's this constant battle of like, yeah, if you fail, you learn. And then it's like, no, you can't you bail. Like fail. this yeah. is how you, this is how you eat. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, I mean, I gotta be honest. I don't know if this call made me more excited or more terrified for this program. Um, so I, I'm, I've, I'm I've kept between it between the two. I have kept it like very in check and, and I've gone through and tested all of it. Um, you know, I wrote, wrote the programming. I mean, man, it was probably a month or two ago now. And I've been going through, I literally didn't work out from the games until like not that long ago. How and good so did I that went feel in, though? Uh, oh, I mean, I, I do that every year. Oh, okay, cool. Like after the games, I do nothing. 
you know, I'll see my competitors back training Monday after the games or Tuesday. And I'm like, you dumb dumbs. Like you just went through the hardest physical test of your life and you gave yourself like 26 hours off. What are you doing? Um, yeah. So I always take a lot of time off, but then every year when I'm getting back into it, I think the same thing. I'm like, no, you took, you, you went too far this year. Like you lost, you lost your fitness. You're never getting it back. Um, <laughs> you're washed so was, up now. It's that every year for, for like five years now. That's um, amazing. So it's, so I'm hitting it with, with very low conditioning. Um, but it's, but it's good too, because everything is worked off paces. You know, the, the timing of the different, uh, Metcons is all intentional. So, you know, early on, there's a lot of just very light, um, stuff that, you know, you're not going to fail a rep. It, it comes down to willpower and if you want to lift it. Um, so, you know, it's like a longer duration, but just continuously moving to try to get that mentality of as soon as you're off the bike or off the rower, you don't need to sit for 30 seconds, get right into the work. And then over, over the progressions, it gets into, okay, now, now the weight's getting a little bit heavier. Now, when you take 10 seconds, you feel like a fresh person. You finish your conditioning piece. You feel like you're sitting there for a minute, but because you're so used to no rest, no rest, no rest. Now you feel great and you get right, right to work. Um, yeah. And then, so I, I programmed it with the intent of people that have lives are doing this. So I put Sundays, Sundays as a rest day, um, so that they have a day to be normal humans. <laughs> Uh, so Saturdays, Saturdays are, I'm excited to see people do the Saturdays because like 40 minute imams have been a staple in my training. Yeah. I do 10 minute imams right now and I'm cursing the world the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, once again, it's, um, you know, like. I put in suggestions for numbers of what you should like, Hey, if I were doing this, I would be doing this amount on the row or this amount on the bike and these other movements. But you, you'd be foolish to think that that those numbers are going to apply to everyone, especially on something as long as 40 minutes. Um, I mean, Sam and I do do the workouts together all the time. And, uh, she's not pulling the numbers that I'm pulling, you know, like, no, you'd be crazy. Yeah. She's four foot 11. She fitnesses for fun. Like, <laughs> no, she's not doing that. Um, <laughs> so, you know, a lot of it's based off percentages, but I think, I think there's so much value in those workouts because you're spiking your heart rate up and you're bringing it back down. You're spiking it up. You're bringing it back down. It's a incredible physical test because not many people train that time, time domain. Um, you know, there's work and rest, there's rest built into the workouts. So, you know, you're trying to work ideally for 40 seconds out of every minute. So you're not 10 minutes into the workout thinking like I have 30 more minutes of this. I'm only a quarter of the way through. No, you're, you're taking it one station at a time. So you're only looking 40 seconds ahead every time. Yeah. Um, and the, I mean, it's just, a, it's a mental test of like it's it's a long workout but they've they've been a staple i don't know why i started them <laughs> way back when um but i've done them and and I, I attribute so much of my success to them so it's been a once if not twice a week thing so they're in the program uh once a week but i'm i'm hoping there there becomes the connotation of like it's a very daunting task because it's a long workout, but I'm hoping there becomes this association with like, as soon as I get this EMOM done, I'm, I have, I'm on a rest day. You know, I had that with my training of every week we went and did these hill sprints and it was the most gnarly hill, terrible. And it was 0.55 miles, all pavement, all just a uphill plane incline there's no flat there's no break nothing it was the worst worst for training but i had it in my mind we did it so many times 
and it was the last box of the week. So it became this thing of I'm excited for these hill runs because I know as soon as I'm done my last one, I'm on a rest day. Yeah. And so it's like, I want to get there. I want to get it done and then rush home. And so I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that, that people create that association with the, with that part of the week of like, yo, this is going to be the toughest mon- mental test for you. It's going to hurt like hell physically, but I think it's so beneficial and it, it means you, your training week is done. You get a rest day now. Yeah, that's going to be a great way to end my my event sessions with a nice little 40-minute EMOM on yeah. Saturdays. I can't wait for that. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, my, so, and, my, my... And I, I, I want to keep like an open line of communication with the people doing it because someone like yourself, yeah, you probably shouldn't be doing a 40-minute EMOM <laughs> because <laughs> your, your training should be so specific. But... You know, so trying to educate the members on like, so for like yourself, it's like, okay, maybe you shouldn't be doing 40. Should we cut it down to 30, 20? You know, Five. you don't want to, <laughs> <laughs> like you, you don't want to ruin your strongman training for the week because your conditioning piece, you know, you tore your hands or, you know, you just shocked your, your nervous system, whatever it is. But, um, yeah, it, it'll be fun, especially training you specifically. To What's see really this go. I, the timing couldn't on, honestly couldn't be better, you know. So I'm competing next weekend out in Bahrain, um, first really? time since my injury, and then it's right into Worlds Prep. So World's Strongest Man is going to be mid June this year, um, you know. So I'm, I'm coming off this injury, getting getting recovered, you know, for my overhead stuff. But being able to, you know, Worlds is a lot like the games where. Yeah. You know, typical competitions for us are one or two days. Uh, Worlds is spread out over the course of six. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, it's a whole different, whole different ball. Totally. And, you know, the biggest thing that's paramount at at Worlds is the recovery aspect of it because there's, you know, one to two events per day over the course of these days and trying to limit the amount of soreness and being able to get right back up and go. I think that's what's most exciting for me in doing this program is just to really just attack the weakness of my conditioning, increase my recovery, um, Mm -hmm. and maybe look a little bit better with my shirt off. (laughs) That's all. That's always the best best perk of, you know. Everyone has their reason for like, all right, I want to get in shape so I'm healthier, so I can do, so I'm more capable, all that stuff. And then it's like, and I can take my shirt off in public and everybody. You know, be proud. Everybody wants to look good naked. I mean, that's yeah. just what it comes down to. <laughs> <laughs> so why why what's their reasoning for for at the worlds that? it's so much different than any other competition tv ah yeah. um you know strongman it's not a terribly exciting sport to watch live um because there's a lot of setup and breakdown i mean an event session for me on a weekend takes anywhere between four and six hours um and yeah. that's just because i'm breaking down implements moving weights around the gym so it just takes time yeah. um not to mention there's also 30 athletes at world's strongest man um okay yeah yeah so like what was there at the arnold 10. yeah oh, okay so, yep, so that makes sense then. 30 athletes at worlds were broken up into five different qualifying groups and there's this whole system um so it's it's drawn out a lot longer yeah i i remember it was early in the year i actually i had a call with uh brian shaw and you know just kind of like hey how does your guys season work you know like crossfit was kind of going through these changes and you know, so I'm just picking his brand. I'm like, yo, you've been in the game a long time. Uh, you know, so I'm asking him how the qualifying works. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Like, your guys' system is way more f***ed up than CrossFit's. <laughs> I was like, you, you poor guys. And I'm like, the loads that you're lifting, it's like, I, I wouldn't want to do that once a year, let alone... Yeah multiple times and I mean, then you have and to here's score the thing. points and, oh. in strongman if you don't win one of these competitions you're competing you gotta go again 10 to 12 13 sometimes more times per year i mean it is just insane i think right now um and i actually literally just before we got on this call i got an email for another contest invite um i think i have like 12 shows between april and december this year 
So it's just, it's nonstop, you know, in a, in a normal yeah. year without a pandemic, our, our competitive season typically goes from the first competitions of the year is in January, last one's in November. So we get maybe- Yeah, it's spread out a little season. bit more, yeah. And then, you know, oh, to peak man. for those different shows, it's just, it's tough. Well, I remember like just being backstage and kind of seeing these guys, you know, even the announcers are like, all right, this guy's lifting, he doesn't have any cartilage in his knee. And it's like, why are you here? Like, yeah. Go home, rest. What are you doing? <laughs> and yeah, I mean, some of the guys, like they couldn't, they weren't sitting down in between their deadlift attempts because their back was Jacked so up. hurt. Yeah. And they, they're like, no, like when I sit, my back flares up even more. So I just got to stand. I'm like, oh my God, like, dude, they like, take an event off. But then like after talking to Brian and realizing like, you know, how the scoring and qualifying works. It's like, man, you guys yeah. are just, yeah, just going I mean, yeah. hard all year. You know, that's one of the reasons why I'm jumping into this contest so soon. You know, just five months ago, I ruptured my tricep dealing with that. And then, you know, coming back and competing next weekend already. How the hell do you rupture a tricep? So I was attempting the log press world record. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I, uh, so I was actually, it was my attempt before the world record. So it was 485 I was going for on the log, which would have been a new American record. Um, yeah. And, you know, so I am actually the only athlete that split jerks as well. Most of the other athletes, they just push press. Um, so I was just about to get the jerk, had the log just above my eyes, and then, you know, felt a nice, uh, felt just felt an oh. explosion off my elbow. So it's yeah. pretty, I, I don't recommend it. <laughs> now why why would no one else do a split jerk like, so why what's the benefit of doing a push press uh, it's, there is none right i think it's just because and you know it's such a technical lift um it takes time to learn yeah. and get really good at i was horrible at overhead when i started strongman but i was still training in crossfit um, so the coaches were just like, well, why don't you learn to like split jerk? It's not illegal in the sport. So I started yeah. learning split jerk back in like 2009, 2010 was excelling pretty well with that. And I was like, all right, let's just move it over to strongman and start split jerking the log. And it's totally different than split jerking a barbell for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, I have, I have a metal log in, in the garage that just like wanted to get my hands on prior to showing with the Cause I'm always assuming that you're going to try to pull out something that'll just throw us for a loop. So I was like, oh, all right, yeah. I just want to get my hands on it a handful of times. And it's like, I, I'm not sure how much the log weighs, but it's like, I did not have any, <laughs> any weight worth talking about added on to this. And it's like, I've split jerked like 420, 425, maybe something like that. That's wild. And it's like on the log, it's like, maybe like 185 like it was <laughs> it's gnarly terrible and i was like oh it'll translate over and it's like your your axis is now way out here it's so far away from your body you can't I'm see like, it i don't even know i don't even know what to do yeah and like i'm trying to dip and drive and the butt and the logs just kind of rolling off my chest i'm like <laughs> oh you, you get a whole new respect for what you guys do because like when you're going against other people your size like relative skill level it's got all right you know yeah yeah 500 pound atlas stone so what <laughs> and then and then you go to pick up a 250 pound you're like i can't even i can't even it's hug this thing way. yeah yeah so <laughs> what is the one strongman event you would want to do i mean you got any hollowed out cars with the straps on them that way we can yeah, like i know people so <laughs> So I, I grew up, loved Strongman. Like, like if Saturday morning watching cartoons, if I'm flipping through the channels and it was the, what was it, Metrix Strongman yeah. games, it was like, that's where the channel stopped. I loved it. And you know, like all the classic names, love um, Pujanovsky. Yep. You know, he was the one guy that like just ripped out of his mind. Um, yeah, I mean, all the, all the events were so unique. You know, the one I've always been curious about was the one with the pillars. Oh yeah, that, the like Hercules the pillars one. are hang, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Oh, oh, what's his name? The guy that he has like the craziest grip. Uh, Currently, I think he's French. Yeah, there's a French. guy, Mark Felix. Mark Felix. Yeah. Yes. So he also has massive hands. His Dude. hands are literally eleven and a half inches big. So, so I've watched him on TV. Like I, I recognized him, and uh, we were at dinner together, and I was like, I have to go up and <laughs> like just shake this man's hand, like. You know, like the first time, so I don't know if I've ever told this story. It was Rogue was having a dinner. The owners of Rogue were having a dinner for all the strongman athlete um, after they finished competing. And this is a couple years ago. And it was like only the strongman. And I was like, oh, like what time do I show up? <laughs> Not like, hey, can I show up? I'm like, no, I don't care. I'll be I'm, yeah. I'm coming. And because I'm like, I grew up watching half of these guys on TV and I've geeked out. Like you see their stats, it's just mind boggling. And uh, yeah, so Mark, I was like, I have to go out and meet this guy. And it was like putting my hand in a catcher's mitt. <laughs> and it was just like, yeah. like I shook his hand and I was the whole time I'm meeting all the athletes. I'm like, don't be a dork, like just. <laughs> be cool man and uh and i shook his hand and i immediately was like oh my god hold your hand up next to mine and i was like and it, i was that, immediately that was like the moment that was the moment damn it dude like <laughs> you are the guy that he doesn't want to meet at parties and then i was like i don't care i'm I mean, i'm so giddy right now <laughs> to be fair when i met you literally a year ago this weekend i kind of felt the same way you know like because obviously <laughs> I mean, you know, you mentioned I started CrossFit before you did, and I knew Sammy before you did as well. So, so yeah, I mean, I think this is a super funny story. It was, you know, the, the stands, like there's not many people there because it was only coaches and family members allowed at that, at that Arnold. And they're doing the whole intro of just like these, I mean, you guys are giants We're walking out and you got the flag over your shoulder and it's so badass. And they're going through and it's like, I'm recognizing all the names. And then it was the first time I'd ever heard your name. And I was like, oh, like, who's this new guy? And it's the USA, let's go. And then as they they say your name and you're walking out with the flag and Sammy, like her and I are standing next, she goes, Rob? <laughs> and I was like, what, what do you mean? Like you say that, like, like, you know, and she's like, I think I went to college with him. Like, it has to be him and then sure enough like as you're walking back she's like yep yep i went to college with him i was like get the fuck out of here what a small world <laughs> so wild uh, yeah and then you know and there's been a couple couple strong men like we're at your competition so i don't want to interrupt you're in between events or you're warming up or whatever it is and you know i've gotten to know thor a little bit over the last couple of years and i'm like I'm going to wait. I'm not going to interrupt his warm ups. And then it's like, you just come over and you're just kind of shooting the breeze. I'm like, I'm like, yo, you, you're in a competition right now. What are you doing? You're like, oh, I got plenty of time before the next one. Like, this is so cool. A little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I don't want to keep any more of your time. I know you have a bunch of going on. So thank you. <laughs> For, uh, Dude, thank, for thank you so today. much. I'm um, super pumped. I'm, I'm really excited for this. So the program drops April? April 1st um, on, yeah, hybrid performance method. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm so excited to get it launched, to get people going on it. You know, I've played my cards so close to my chest with my training for the last you know, five, six years. Um, you know, even just doing like a home tour of my gym, I put up a YouTube video of that. And like, I've never showing people the equipment that's like stashed in the corners and stuff like that so i'm really excited for people to get like a peek into my world and what i've been doing for the last couple of years uh you know i'm so excited to get you and your husband up to vermont uh absolutely you know i'll, I'll have to find some more strongman equipment so we can do workouts back and forth um, i'll put you through a crossfit workout you put me through a strongman event and, uh, we'll and just we can... take we'll just take a hike and find some rocks. There you go. <laughs> it's really not so much simple. more to it. So simple. <laughs> just find something real heavy and try to pick it up. <laughs> 
No, I'm super pumped. Like I said, you know, I tech, I messaged you when when I saw it come out, and I was like, yeah, you know what? Just let's let's buy it and hop in and see what it does. So I'm excited to see how it complements my strongman training, getting the conditioning in there, you know, and kind of taking everything to the next level this year. So it's gonna yeah. be a lot of fun. Hell yeah, dude! I'm pumped. This is gonna be fun. Sick man. Well, I'll uh, I'll text you tomorrow when I do that 500 meter row. Um, you know, we'll see what I can pull. So it'll be fun. Yeah, that. Yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by this. This will be. I mean, for me, like something that I've worked on for years and years, and you're just going to smash my score right first attempt. There's no question about yeah, it. That's the only thing I'll be good at. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. Have fun with everything. Give Sammy my best. I'll talk to you guys soon, and uh, you know, try to try to relax a little bit. Don't don't do too much. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Awesome. Hey, man. Thank you for thank everything. You. You got it. So hope you absolutely love that. Uh, Matt obviously is an awesome guy. He is so excited about everything he's doing on the uh, on the other end of his CrossFit career. Um, I'm super fortunate to have him as part of my team. Um, you know, between him, Poundstone, and Nathan Payton working with me all together collaboratively, it's going to make. Um, try to make the most optimal conditions for me as a pro athlete going into this season, coming off such a devastating injury. So really, really excited about everything. I'm not terribly excited about the conditioning, but I know I have to do it. And I know it's going to make me a better athlete and put me in a better place to uh, start winning some trophies and, and winning some titles. So I'm really excited about that. As always, check out all the sponsors down below in the description. Share the video, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, peace out.